like now to give the floor to the Minister of Armenia. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, ten years ago, the basic principles for the settlement of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict were presented to the sides by the Minsk Group co-chair countries at the OSCE Ministerial Council in Madrid. Two years later, the Athens Ministerial Council adopted a statement on behalf of all participating states that strongly supported the basic principles and noted that the commitment of the parties to reach an agreement on the conflict resolution based upon the principles of non-use of force or threat of force, territorial integrity and the equal rights and self-determination of peoples. The presidents of the co-chair countries in their five statements issued since 2009 reiterated their support to these principles and main elements for the conflict resolution, which were presented by them as an integrated whole. Since then, the co-chairs have reaffirmed this approach on many occasions, including during almost all OSC ministerial councils and most recently in their joint statement made in Hamburg. On numerous occasions, Armenia has reiterated its readiness to continue negotiations on conflict settlement based on these principles and elements. Azerbaijan's uncompromising and maximalist stance has became, uh, become a serious obstacle to the advancement of the peace process. Azerbaijan rejects the co-chair conflict resolution proposals, doing everything to keep the status quo intact, at the same time claiming that allegedly it is advocating for the change of status quo. Azerbaijan's intentions can be easily tracked by its expenditures. Baku spends billions to buy influence in the world capitals, as once again became obvious through a notorious laundromat affair. It spends much more for purchases of advanced weaponry, but it has not invested anything to prepare its population for peace. We are convinced that there is no alternative to the peace talks and there is a need to conduct intensive negotiations based on the proposals of the co-chair countries. It is with this understanding that I met six times with my Azerbaijani colleague during past year and the last one was just yesterday. The meetings between the ministers and the able mediation of the co-chairs helped to prepare the Geneva summit of presidents of Armenia and Azerbaijan last October. This was the first meeting between the presidents after about 16 months interval and it passed mostly in a positive mood. For the first time in about four years at the Geneva summit it was possible to adopt a joint statement. This statement reflected uh, what Armenia has been long advocating for to take additional steps to reduce tensions on the line of contact. These steps have been identified in the statements made at the Vienna and St. Petersburg summits of 2016. The Geneva statement also stressed the necessity to intensify the negotiation process and this too has always been strongly advocated by Armenia. Unfortunately, just after the summit, Baku again resorted to its language of groundless accusations and warmongering. Yesterday's meeting with my Azerbaijani colleague generally passed also in a positive mood. We will see the developments after it. Mr. Chairman, next year, people of Nagorno-Karabakh will mark 30 years of their struggle for the right to choose their destiny, for human dignity and freedom. The settlement of the conflict should respect all inherent rights of the people of Artsakh and should ensure their unhindered implementation. Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank the Chairmanship in Office for leading the organization throughout the year, good organization of the Ministerial Council and the warm hospitality, and I would like to assure Italy, the incoming chair, that it can count on Armenia's support. I would also like to welcome Slovakia joining the Troika. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I would like to give now the